Good morning and welcome to the newspaper review. It's a new week and lots of things happened during the weekend and towards the end of last week. I am Uyin Priye Krumale and it's good to have you join me this morning in the newspaper review. The National Association of Resident Doctors, we remember talking about this particular story last week. On the 1st of July 2021, they went on a strike. On the 25th of July 2021, they went on a strike. And on the August the 2nd, which was last week, Monday, they went on a strike as well. About four times, the National Association of Medical Doctors, uh, of Residential Doctors, and uh, they've gone on strike for four times. And their demands have not changed. They have blamed the federal government for not honoring the agreements that they had and uh, the government in return uh, most especially the minister of labor productivity and employment senator dr chris ngigi of course was on one of the platforms uh, during the weekends to uh, debunk and reject some of the allegations and accusations that the National Association of Medical Doctors is accusing uh, the federal government on. The minister said some of these allowances they have paid and uh, there is the process that will give way for the negotiations of other agreements that the National Association of Residential Doctors has given to the federal government. The minister equally said that not all the agreements, no, not all the demands of the doctors falls within the jurisdiction of the federal government that some of them falls within the duty and obligation of the state government it was actually advising the national association of resident doctors to meet the state government to demand for some of the agreements that falls within their jurisdiction but what broke the back of the camel was that the minister has vouched to implement the no work, no pay rule and law on medical doctors if they do not res resume duties today. These and other stories like uh, the, the Wari refinery, the Kaduna refinery, the Port Accord refineries that have been scheduled to go through rehabilitation at uh, this particular point in time. A lot of Nigerians have raised their voices that if these refineries for some time now have been lying comatose without being productive of what essence is it to allocate billions of dollars to for the rehabilitation of these refineries however the minister of state for petroleum resources to me perceive over the weekend equally came on air to talk about the processes that these refineries are currently going through most especially citing the refinery the refineries rather two in Port Harcourt River State which have very very large capacity to produce over 200,000 barrels per day of crude product we'll be taking a look at this particular stories that are making the round now we're being joined by a public affairs analyst Mr. Ibrahim good morning Mr. Ibrahim and welcome to the newspaper review now one of the problem or one of the issues that has been on the front banner in Nigeria today is not just only the Delta variant of COVID-19 and the battle against COVID-19 that the federal government of Nigeria is trying to put up resources and more strategies and efforts in combating the menace. But as well, the National Association of Medical Doctors or the National Association of Resident Doctors are embarking on the strike at this particular time in Nigeria. What's your perspective to these happenings? I mean, I think that is a very um, unfortunate development in a country, particularly considering uh, uh, the the spread of COVID-19. And of course, the Delta variant, it's kind of tearing apart many African countries, and Nigeria is no different. So it's really, really unfortunate to have uh, the National Association of Resident Doctors and back, really cannot fault them. They've had numerous negotiations with the federal government, and it's just the case that the federal government hasn't honored fully. We'll be calling on the uh, striking doctors to go back to work. The federal government hasn't paid them. What's going to happen to that? Because if you are forcing the people, uh, these people to go back to work, that you're not going to pay them if you, they do not go back to work, that's like, uh, it's really, really unfair. And I don't want to say it's kind of enslaving because 
Perhaps that's what it is. Some of these demands that they have made are within the jurisdiction of the state government and not the federal government. So that's one of the reasons why the federal government or the federal minister is saying that there is going to invoke the law, which is out to do with Article 43, uh, no work, no pay. And if they continue, it's going to get an alternative to, to carry out the job of the resident doctors over here in Nigeria. Let's look at it from the perspective of the they doctors have, themselves. About, yes. You talk about 16,000 doctors. How do you replace 16,000 doctors overnight? It's not going to happen. I see what the Honorable Minister is saying, that the states, of course, do have some roles to play in fixing this problem. Of course they do. But everything starts from the federal government. If the federal government is not showing the proper language or even the proper attitude, so the state government will not be persuaded to honor their own end of the bargain. And if you remember, this MOU has been in place for, I think, uh, more than 100 days or something like that. So they've, they've had a lot of time to work on this agreement with the striking doctors. But it's just the case that, I see the case with the ASU, the uh, Minister of uh, Labor just seems to be in a world of his own, where he, where he believes that he can command and dictate what people sweating for this country should do. It's absolutely undone for you to say you should go back to work and you're going to invoke for the three of the constitution if they do not go back to work. So what about honoring the agreement you have with them? This has to be uh, a two-way uh, consideration. The migration of doctors from Nigeria, the concern it has drawn, and uh, the brain drain, which is uh, some of the tolls that the Federal Republic is paying with regards to some of its brightest minds in the medical practitioner moving away from Nigeria to foreign countries to go and uh, serve as medical doctors. But the thing is, these medical doctors have been well trained over here in Nigeria. It's taking away the brain from Nigeria. What's, what's your take on this? Because it's in human nature to always find what works best for you. So if you spend five years in medical school, train, sacrificing financially, sacrificing personally, and in the end of the day, you have been offered some meager salaries by the federal government or the state government. And of course, you have brighter offers overseas. It's human nature to accept what, what, uh, what brings you more dividends in the end of the day. But the consequence is that our brightest are uh, being shipped across the ocean, uh, to the Americas or to, to Europe. And I live in the U.S. where you'll be surprised if you go to an average hospital in the West, on the, on the East Coast, five times in a, in a year, there are chances that three out of those five times you'll be treated to, you know, you'll be treated or attended to by a Nigerian um, doctor or nurse. So it's unfortunate development in the country that really needs to stop. And it's not going to stop with this kind of... Uh, treatment that the Minister of Labor is trying to pass on the National Institution of President, President Douglas. But uh, if we look at the way those uh, the agreements between the National Association of Medical Doctors and the government, it, the accusation was also leveled against the medical practitioners that they are not uh, giving the federal government enough room to complete processes of negotiations and uh, uh, signing of memorandum of understanding and the memorandum of action, which is currently on the table, even though they are demanding uh, some demands even cut across the payment of insurance uh, costs to some of the members of the National Association of Resident Doctors, about 19 of them that died the COVID during the COVID-19, uh, the peak of COVID-19 in the country. What's your take on that? Well, I think it's very it's that we have our very own people who are going through a lot, sacrificing all to take care of our parents and every one of us in the country. And if you have those people sacrificing that much, and still the federal government is not giving them the respect they deserve, because again, this is not always about the money. It's about respect, treating people with dignity. If you do not treat the doctors with dignity in this country, there is no way to, um, for better offers overseas. Or those who cannot live among them, they will resort to actions like uh, strike that we have seen. And it's just unfortunate that the average Nigerian uh, will be the one to bear the brunt. Because now I'm, I'm hearing a lot about uh, withdrawing their families or loved ones from hospitals across the federation. This is really unfortunate. I'm not 
not, not this, this kind of uh, mechanism of uh, COVID-19. It, it's, it's so, so disheartening that uh, we, whatever uh, Nigeria, the average Nigerian is going through, you still have to think that if something happens to you in the afternoon, or why are you going about your business, you cannot be taken to the hospital because the doctors are not there. So if you don't have money to go to private practitioners, then you still are pretty much uh, in, a, in, in a very precarious situation. All right. Uh, now, okay, Mr. Brian, let's move away from that. Let's go to uh, COVID-19 vaccination program. Uh, at the moment, there's been a postponement of uh, the administration of the vaccines to people in Nigeria. What's your take on that? So, with the Delta variant really spiking up in the country, and as I said, across Africa, frankly, uh, we've seen some resurgence in the way it's resurgence in the way governments across the continent are addressing the vaccination uh, process in their respective countries. But again, I don't know why Nigeria actually seems to be different. In these last two weeks, there are about 53 deaths reported from COVID. So, uh, 100 additional cases added in the last two weeks. Those are really scary numbers. And I also learned that the federal government recently acquired about 4 million doses of the Moderna vaccine, which said origin. But it's not enough to acquire vaccines. You have to send those vaccines out for them to be given to people who need the vaccines. And if they do not do that, they're going to expire. So it's not about us having about 4 million doses of Moderna or even expecting the uh, additional Johnson & Johnson doses that have heard in the next month or two. But it's more about vaccinating people. And how do you vaccinate people when doctors are on strike? The people who have COVID here, those who do not have COVID, need precautions to help them stay away from COVID-19. And if you do not have hospitals functioning properly because doctors are on strike, then you really cannot uh, manage COVID-19 effectively. And I think this, this pretty much leads to uh, one another. Uh, the doctors strike on the one hand, and the vaccination phase two on the other hand. Nigeria is one of the largest producing states in the globe of when it comes to petroleum and crude oil. But the thing is, currently, the capacity, the local capacity to refine its product is being one of the challenge bedeviling the oil industry and the sector in Nigeria. What is your perspective on this? I think uh, this is, again, another case of the Nigerian government fumbling their gates. You see, I do not think we still continue to look up to the federal government as being the way out for us to properly refine petroleum in this country, where uh, private refineries across the world have proved this theory to be very wrong. And I see a very bright light in the ongoing negotiation between the government and the DAPT um, group about their refinery in Lagos. If we can see more privatization, of refineries in the country, then I think things can be brighter. Particularly if you consider the fact that trillions and trillions and trillions are being earmarked for these refineries for since God knows when. And if not work, they've been more important. So what that means is that the monies are not going where they should be going. And if you if we are addressing this problem of refinery, uh, more important refinery with the same strategy of funding federal money into this refinery. And I do not think we are doing the right thing because it's repeating the same mistake over and over and over again. So it's really unfortunate that uh, uh, the late President Sierra who are rolled back some of the privatization measures uh, initiated by the Basel government around 2007. Uh, if things have been going on towards the privatization end, I think, or at least joint ownership, I think we we'll have better refineries today. But it's really, really absurd to see that we are spending yet another trillion and trillions of there on refineries like that. I don't know why the foreign foreign government keeps bothering itself. It is that cannot obviously um, implement. Okay.